Hello learners, welcome back to another enlightening tutorial on JMeter. My name is Kaushik Rajchaudhary and I am thrilled to guide you through an intriguing scenario that delves into testing high server load demands using JMeter. As you may know, we have already prepared a JMeter test plan and loaded it up, which I am going to show you right now. So this is my J test plan. And this is loaded with required configurations, making this a practical and hands-on journey. Now let's write, dive right in. In our JMeter test plan, we have meticulously crafted two thread groups. So these are the two thread groups. So each thread group mirrors real-world conditions by simulating high server load demands on an API. One thread group utilizes the SQL in SQL in SQLite in-memory database, while the other employs the MS SQL database, that is this. And they are running to different application. One is the API solution that you have been working on so far in this course with the SQLite in-memory collection. And this one is the same application replicated with MS SQL local DB. So with 100 threads and a ramp up type of just one second, for both, like let me show you 100 users, ramp up period of 1 and loop count of 10. And the same over here, the same configuration in both the thread groups or both the application. Now before we proceed, it's worth noting that we have already set up our JMeter test plan by configuring the HTTP request defaults. So here are the HTTP request defaults. So HTTP request default for the in memory collection, that's top thread group, and the bottom thread group is for um, HTTP request default with the, the MS SQL local DB database. And they have got the same body data, and uh, they have got the server name, port number, and path configured for these two applications which are already running. So we have, um, by configuring the same way, we have ensured uniformity in server details and default body data settings for both thread groups. The step is crucial as it maintains consistency in our testing approach, providing a level playing field for comparison. Now, HTTP sampler. These two are the HTTP sampler. So, our testing engine, the HTTP sampler, is now poised to send POST request. Okay, So, POST request for both of these applications. Uh, this is where we exert load on the server, emulating real load scenarios or real world scenarios. Keeping the post verb consistent across both thread groups guarantees that we are scrutinizing the same operation under identical conditions. Now, with our JMeter test plan ready and loaded, it's time to hit that run button. Okay, so at the moment, the result trees are all clear, and let me hit the run button. And for this, this is the run button, the results tree for this um, MS SQL DB, and this one is for the MS SQL local DB. All right, so let's observe, let's analyze. We have run the test, we have observed the results. <coughs> so after running it, we see that as the test progress, there is an interesting um, notice. We'll have noticed something which is intriguing. Okay, this this is the thread group utilizing the SQL in SQLite in-memory database. It exhibits an unpredictable behavior with response status is oscillating between 201 created. This is a 201. Uh, you can see response header created, and this is. 500 internal server error response body with so much of details for the error log stack trace. Okay, um, this erratic pattern could potentially be attributed to SQLite's concurrency limitations when subjected to high server loads. To decipher this anomaly, we delve into the error logs. In our case, the error logs provide a hint SQLite's 
struggle to modify user functions due to active statements. So this line, unable to delete modify user function due to active statements. Now contrast this with the MS SQL local DB. With the tangible database, this is having the tangible tangible database. It showcases is much more consistent performance, consistently delivering 201 created status codes. Now here, this captivating scenario highlights the pivotal role of database choices when addressing high server load demands. It is evident that in SQLite in-memory database, it may not be the optimal fit for such scenarios due to its concurrency limitations, unlike more robust alternative like MS SQL local DB. So I trust this practical demonstration has illuminated the intricate nuances of load testing and underscored the critical role of database selection in delivering peak performance. So I can also check quickly uh, about the database in this case viewing the data after running the um, hitting the run button I had to actually stop this for the database to get refreshed. Now we can see that this to do items the data for this to do item is got all the created items that we uh, demonstrated in the geometer test 201 created items are these are the created items so it runs from right from uh, around this ID 2001 to 3000. So the ID is because it is my Microsoft SQL local DB or actually basically it is representing Microsoft SQL. So all those IDs that were created earlier and were deleted, it start takes the next number for self assigning the IDs. But if you look into the um, application from the that is being run with the SQLite local memory, you will find that IDs are, it has also got in memory, this is the in memory database, not a physical database, but in memory to do items table. It has got an ID up to 207. The important thing to see that only a few items have been created as compared to all the items that has been created with 201 response status in the um, other application which is running MS SQL local DB.